On this historic day, January 26, 1950, India proudly declared itself a republic, breaking free from the shackles of the British Empire. To commemorate this momentous occasion, the nation orchestrated a magnificent parade, culminating in the inauguration of the first president, Dr. Rajendra Prasad. Today, as India observes the 75th Republic Day, President Draupadi Murmu took the helm in leading the nation's festivities along Kartava path. The Republic Day parade showcased India's formidable military prowess and its rich tapestry of diversity. President Momo was joined by the French President Emmanuel Macron, who graced the event as this year's chief guest, adding an international touch to the celebrations. That have assembled here. Prime Minister Modi greeting President Murmu and of course his friend, the President of France, Emmanuel. This year, the Republic Day Parade showcased the themes of Vikshud Parad and Parad Lok Tantra Ki Matruka, featuring the participation of approximately 13,000 special guests. A notable departure from tradition, the parade opened with a groundbreaking performance by 100 women artists playing Indian musical instruments like Shank, Natswaram and Nagata, breaking away from the customary display by military jets. The flypass included military jets and a multi-role tanker transport MRTT aircraft. Additionally, the celebration saw the involvement of a 95-member French marching contingent and 33-member band contingent. <laughs> Following the gallantry award winners, we have a very special marching contingent and band from France. The band is Music of the French Foreign Legion. The French Foreign Legion music band led by Captain Hurda, comprising 30 musicians playing the Legion's anthem called La Boudin. However, as we revel in the festivities today, let's take a nostalgic journey back to India's inaugural Republic Day celebrations. Although India gained independence in 1947, it remained a British dominant for two more years under the governance of the Government of India Act of 1935. The transition occurred on January 26, 1950, when India's newly drafted constitution came into effect, marking the country's status as a sovereign republic. India, that is Bharat, shall be a sovereign democratic republic. The High Commissioner then made and signed a solemn declaration of his allegiance to the new republic and addressed the gathering. Two and a half years ago, the British Empire passed power into the hands of the Indian people. We became an independent country and today, by the proclamation of our constitution, made by our own people in the exercise of the wisdom and the determination and the collective responsibility, we have set the formal seal to the inauguration of that freedom in the form of a constitution. Independence was achieved on August 15, 1947, followed by the adoption of the Constitution of November 26, 1949 and its enactment on January 26, 1950. The choice of January 26 for Republic Day has historical significance, as it was on this day in 1930 that the Indian National Congress proclaimed the declaration of the Indian independence, Purna Swaraj, in opposition to the dominion offered by the Britishers. The inaugural Republic Day celebrations unfolded at Irwin Amphitheatre, now Major Dhyanjan National Stadium in Delhi, with immense pomp and favour. Leaders decided to commemorate the occasion with a military parade and India's first president, Dr. Rajendra Prasad, took his oath during this momentous event. 
Historians describe the chilly morning of January 26, 1950 as filled with excitement, with weeks of preparation and rehearsals by participants contributing to the success of the historic day. Chakravarti Raja Kopal Chan, the 34th and the final Governor General of India, proclaimed the birth of the Republic of India on January 26. Following his oath taking ceremony, the inaugural President of India addressed the crowd in both Hindi and English. Dr. Prasad stated, Today, for the first time in our long and checkered history, we find the entire expanse of this vast land unified under the jurisdiction of one constitution and one union, which assumes responsibility for the welfare of over 320 million men and women who inhabit it, as reported by the BBC. Notably, the Republic Day Parade featured the distinguished presence of then Indonesian President Sukarno as the chief guest. After taking the oath as president, the parade commenced at the Irwin MP Theatre, situated opposite to Purana Kila, now recognized as the major Dhyanjan National Stadium. According to the renowned historian Ram Chandra Goha in his book India after Gandhi, over 3,000 men from the Indian Armed Forces marched in a grand display before the president. Following the parade, President Dr. Prasad conducted an inspection and the artillery fired a 31 gun salute delivered in three installments. Adding to the ceremonial atmosphere, during the intervals between these installments, the parade executed a fujua, a formal celebratory gunfire repeated thrice and followed by three enthusiastic cheers offered to the President of the Republic. The spectacle reached its climax as Indian Air Force's Liberator planes soared overhead. Subsequently, the president's carriage, drawn by horses, made its way into the stadium, escorting President Dr. Prasad back to Government House, now known as Rashtrapati Bhavan. This sequence of events encapsulated the inaugural celebration of Republic Day in the year 1950. Now let's explore some of the transformations that have transpired in the Republic Day celebrations. Up until 1954, the Republic Day Parade was consistently hosted at Irwin Stadium. It wasn't until 1955 that the venue transitioned to Rajput, now recognized as Kartavya Path. In the late 1950s and early 60s, India grappled with linguistic tensions as the government attempted to establish Hindi as the national language. Acknowledging the unrest, authorities introduced a cultural dimension to the parade by incorporating W and Flotillus. This not only infused the parade with more cultural vibrancy and colors, but also extended its duration. Historian Srinath Raghavan noted to the BBC, for Indians, the parade became primarily a symbolic event, reinforcing their identity as a part of a robust republic. 